And our guest on this segment is Mark Lepak with the Oklahoma Legislature. Mark, welcome. Thank good, you. Thank good you for to having have me you here, lad. House. Yes, sir. Uh, House District 9, which is Claremore in the middle of Rogers County. What possibly motivated you to get involved? You know, I find myself answering that question in different ways to different people. And it, 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 you kind of look back and you, you think, well, what I'm thinking about now, wh what was I thinking about then? Uh, at the time, uh, actually, I was getting interested in a, a national movement, if you will, Article 5 movement, uh, which is the concept of states convening to propose amendments to the United States Constitution. It's a part of the way we amend the Constitution that people don't really know about. And my thought was this movement was growing and if Oklahoma was going to, whether they wanted to or not, was going to participate. We needed people kind of plugged into what was going on. And that maybe is what picked uh, my initial interest, but, um, you know, the issues of the day um, that everybody hears about, you know, get interest. I've got five kids, um, 10 grandkids. Uh, you want Oklahoma, everybody, every politician says this, you mm -hmm. want Oklahoma to be a great place. It is a great place uh, uh, to live and work and raise your family. Um, uh, and, and it's really as simple as that. And I had some, I'd been working at, at uh, my career for at that time, 36 years with Southwestern Bell, SBC, AT&T over the years. And, and uh, um, I was looking to give back and, and the opportunity was there, so I took it. A couple of things that we've seen the legislature work with as of late have troubled me. And I want to go over a couple of them. Sure. Again. That's all right. Even if it's not all right, we're going to do it. <laughs> it's your show. You get to. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about this incredible gun legislation that's gone through where just anybody can carry a, a firearm now, provided they meet certain criteria. Uh, John Q can go down and pick up a gun, buy it, uh, needs no training. I don't know if he'll have insurance. I don't know anything, but I do know he doesn't have to be trained. How'd you vote on that? I voted for it. Why? Well, it's kind of a long story, I guess. Um, any, a lot of these votes are, are judgment calls. Um, you hear the talking points and on either side of an issue, and most of the time, both sets of talking points are valid, are good arguments, are things you need to consider. You weigh them out and then you make the call. Uh, what a lot of people may or may not know, I guess, is um, I call them gun bills, others call them Second Amendment bills, but that a dozen or so get filed every session. Um, one usually makes it out for a full hearing. Um, and, and you've seen several. And, and uh, before we come, came on and I uh, was talking to uh, somebody that was talking about uh, seeing guns in church. And um, we actually ran a piece of legislation my uh, third or fourth year. Um, it was my desk mate that ran it related to that very topic. Um, and it was really more oriented towards um, churches, people in them being able to defend themselves, you know. So uh, we passed that. More recently, I personally was involved with my church in uh, what they were going to do to respond to this situation where a gunman shoots up a church. And so um, in our denomination, we had um, a lot of safety protocol put in. Uh, people don't realize it, but there are uh, armed people in the building uh, for security purposes, and we're um, controlling or su surveilling access, maybe like we hadn't done before, kind of as a defensive posture. So this particular bill comes along, and, and there are a couple of uh, legislators on both sides, House and Senate, that are very strong proponents and, and uh, ran this. Uh, they're calling it constitutional carry. Um, so the, the, as you know, the guts of it is, is, uh, you don't have to have a license, um, uh, or, or training. training or training. Um, and so you start looking around, well, where else has this been implemented? Uh, what's happened there? Um, the information I was getting was it didn't, those places didn't turn into the wild west. Um, responsible gun owners were still responsible gun owners. Um, 
people who were going to carry weapons, regardless of the law, were going to do that anyway. Um, you don't hear much about it, but I was starting to get information about uh, individuals who had successfully defended themselves, which doesn't really speak to a, a license and training or not, you know. Well, let me... And let so me, it, for me, it came down to, to the right, you know, and this is a Second Amendment issue. Let me, let right, me interrupt you, know? you here for a second, sure. because to me, the, the bill speaks to absurdity. Our church, my church, has security unseen. It's a place of worship. It's a place where people go to mend their hearts sure. and connect their soul with their God, which I'm assuming most churches, if not all, are. The same with synagogues, mm -hmm. the same with mosques. The idea that a person would come in openly carrying a gun to me, is just contrary to, to the very nature of the church itself. How in the world could we encourage that sort of behavior? Well, I didn't look at it as encouraging, and, and we've kind of gotten off on the church aspect of it, but um, this isn't limited to that environment. I, I agree with you. Uh, somebody openly caring in a church it would be disconcerting to everybody. Um, you see individuals auditing, I think is the word I heard the other day. They're, they're intentionally doing some things to try to provoke a reaction. Um, I don't know if we understood that would happen. I, I, I thought it, it might. Uh, I think those folks are knuckleheads. Uh, even, even one of the, uh, there's an association, Oklahoma Second Amendment Association, has disavowed that practice, yeah. uh, that individual over in Oklahoma City uh, who's been picked up recently. Um, but I, I think when, you, when I step back and I hear from people, um, this really is kind of a divided subject. Um, well, when the legislation was going on, I didn't hear too much about it. Afterwards, uh, like so many of the things that have been passed, it was, well, this is what I thought, but you mean that happens? That's a possibility too, you know? And, and it really kind of, takes you back to when you're sitting in that chair and you got to vote as to the judgment call. We've got so. two minutes and there are two other things I want to get into with okay. you. Uh, on, the, on, the, on another matter altogether, which, you know, take that away for just a second. Sure. And put on the table the real ID. Why did it take all these years of discussion back and forth? Oh, we're going to lose our privacy. Do they not know about the Internet? <laughs> and second, well, I'm with you on that one. We yeah. lost so much money from the federal sure. government by refusing to implement it early on. And yesterday, just yesterday, it was announced Ascension, which owns St. John Hospital in Tulsa, is giving up information on patients to Google. I mean, there's something wrong yeah. with that to me. It's a loss of privacy that goes beyond the pale. And not one lawmaker has stepped up and said that's not right. Well, that one will probably, the latter thing, will probably get some traction now that we're aware of it. I, I haven't gotten into the details of that. But in terms of the real ID, um, all those decisions were, the, fight, the pushback occurred before I got there. I, I had entered the legislature in November 14. I didn't understand why we weren't doing real ID. And at that point, we had some meetings to talk about where we were with all that. And there's about 36 or 7 features of that ID that, that make up a real ID. And we already had two thirds of them in place on mm -hmm. Oklahoma licenses. So it was that last little bit. The privacy concerns, I think politically were the things that, where the pushback was back in, in those days. Uh, but uh, I know going into my second term, so this would have been uh, after the 16 elections. Got about 45 seconds. Um, our Republican caucus priority was to get the real ID thing done. And we did. Um, of course, you had to fund it, and there's millions of dollars that are going to that. And with our new governor, who's um, accelerated the pace, we'll have this thing rolled out next year. But yeah, we've had delay after delay after delay, and yeah, I think we missed the boat on it. But um, hopefully, by this time next year, we'll have everybody with a real ID and not have to worry about it. Very quickly, 35% increase in salary? Really? Hmm. I, I was as surprised as anybody when I heard about that. I didn't even know there was a 
Compensation Commission in existence when I ran until a couple years ago they reduced our salaries. Then this time around I heard they were meeting. I thought they might put it back to where it was a little bit more, but uh, the number really, really surprised me. I think it was really bad optics. And so now you got a bunch of legislators who've been told they're going to get more money and a lot of fly, a lot of push pushback. It's a constitutionally set up uh, commission from back in 1968. Um, the last time they did anything with the salaries was 1998, where they set the level for the next almost 20 years, and then there was the reduction and now the increase. So I can't defend it. I, I thought it was a lot, but there it is, and we'll all get to deal with you it. You know, we need to make you a regular because you answer questions, and I appreciate it. Oh, well, Thank sure, you. sure. I can't tell you how many times I've had folks come out here and tap dance. Thank you for coming in. Well, you're, you bet. You're welcome. Appreciate be, it. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Coming up, it's been in the news quite a bit as of late. So how do police officers train for the use of force when we come back?